Good evening, everyone. It's Mitch here, or good morning, or good afternoon, or good day, whatever time of day it is you happen to be watching this. It's Mitch here from Advanced Environmental Services on the Gold Coast, and uh, I'm chatting today with Phil Goodman from TrueGrid. How are you, Phil? Excellent, thanks, Mitch. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thanks for coming along. Listen, uh, just a couple of questions. Just wanted to look a little bit more into TrueGrid for those who haven't heard of it before. Um, what is TrueGrid and where is it made? Um, Mitch, TrueGrid was invented in the US, but at the end of the day, it's uh, designed as a Lego building block for the real world. They're trying to find a way to be able to create a permeable paper that allows uh, water to pass back into the ground that's made of 100% recycled HTV plastic um, that is not only good for the environment, takes waste out of the environment, but also allows the product at the end, when it's finished being used, to be recycled again into something further. So we make uh, and manufacture the product in uh, Crispin, in Brisbane, and we utilise post-industrial waste that's sourced around southeast Queensland, mainly mining pipe, irrigation pipe and the like. Uh, infrastructure pipe which uh, brings all of your drinking water to your house. It's exactly the same product. Once it's, uh, uh, it's all the offcuts and things go in, so it's, it's cleaned, put back in, shredded, um, pelletised and then injection moulded into triggered. And of course, all the offcuts go back to be recycled. And if you have a temporary car park and at the end of its life, it can then be picked back up and recycled again, either back into triggered or back into pipe. Wow, okay. So it's recycled and also recyclable. Yes. Fabulous. Yep. Awesome. So you, you mentioned before it's a fully permeable paver. What, what does that mean and, and why is that important? Everybody knows that with climate change, we're seeing more intense rainfalls, uh, rainfall events occur. So what happens is that our existing stormwater systems can't cope with the amount of rain that's falling in such a short period of time. Right. We continue to be, uh, to be asked to build more and more concrete hard stands, more and more houses. We cover more and more land with impervious surfaces where the water can't get away. The advantage of a permeable paver is it catches the rainfall where it falls. So all of the water gets captured in the place where it, it, it actually hits the ground. You can then either treat it, hold it, detain it, or you can allow it to infiltrate back into the ground recharging the water table and, of course, improving natural vegetation. So it gives you the same outcome as having a concrete hard stand, but allowing the water to be captured, to be put back into the vegetation, um, infiltrate back into the ground. And one of the big things that we see, concrete and asphalt have an impact on urban heat island effect. They raise the temperature of rainwater when it hits it, and therefore the water goes into the receiving waters at the end, the natural water course, and it's too hot and that affects the ecology and the like in those streams. By capturing it in TrueGrid, you hold that water, it doesn't get heated. And so even when the water goes out the end into the natural ecology, it is at a much lower temperature than when it runs off asphalt or concrete. So permeability is all about how do you capture the water where it falls, how do you allow it to get back into the ground where it belongs, and how do you reduce urban flooding by not concentrating water flow and obviously pollutants into a point where you then have to deal with that increased flood. Right. That makes all the sense in the world. So you mentioned before the, um, the, the concrete slabs and, and the asphalt and the stuff that we immediately think of, but what, what other applications is TrueGrid designed for? There's a range of areas where you're trying not to put direct pressure on the ground. So we use it a lot for tree protection zones where you want to park cars around trees because it spreads the load and allows the, the roots to uh, be better supported. And you can use it for dust mitigation because you're driving on the plastic itself, not on the gravel. So in large industrial yards or, or uh, car parks in parks and the like, where you always get dust and potholing and those sort of things, very simple to lay it, uh, fill it with angular gravel and then it reduces dust. It also does erosion control because it slows the flow rate of water. We also use it for grass car parking. Originally, when I bought it into the country, it was for a large uh, development that had too much hard stand, and I wanted to re reduce the impact of that by having grass car parking. Nothing in Australia worked. Everything I tried failed. So in the end, the reason TrueGrid works is because of the size of its cells and the depth of its cells, and it allows you then to have physically um, heavy-duty grass car parking. Um, 
So there's a whole range of options that you can use the product for. Right. Wonderful. So it's it sounds like a like a fantastic product, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of uses happening out there. Um, once it's in the ground, once it's once it's there, how is it maintained, and how long does it last? Well, uh, infrastructure pipe will have a lifespan in the ground for hundreds of years. Generally, the water pipe they put in the ground expects it to be there for well over 100 years. We, uh, it has a nominated, HDPE has a nominated lifespan of 50 plus years. So we generally expect it to last 40 plus years when it's in the ground. The only reason HDPE goes brittle is because it's exposed to the sun for a long period of time, like all plastics. But true grid is inert. The product it's made of is inert. It doesn't get um, uh, damaged by feces or acids or solvents and those sort of things. That's why it's particularly good for equestrian, for stables and the like, uh, where you want to store, you know, look after large horses and things or large animals around water troughs for cattle uh, farms, those sort of things. It won't get damaged. It has great compressibility strength. Um, so heavy loads and the like don't damage it. So basically you can say once it's in the ground, it's there forever. Wow, that's not a lot of things in this world are forever, but that's that's a good thing. If true good can be forever, that's a good thing. Well, forty plus years beyond my lifespan. <laughs> yeah, 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 but beyond yours and mine together. So you mentioned the dust before, and it's I was camping recently, and um, in the camping ground, it was a it was dust dust was a major problem. So I can see it being a good application there, and, and I guess that's that's fairly large. Um, uh, sizable pieces of, of road. One of the things that um, that was a problem that I'd, I'd spoke to the guy who was running the, the camp was the um, the rural driveway that he had that went to the property in the first place. It was quite steep. Yep. Well, it wasn't that steep, but it was quite steep if it got wet. You know, if it was if it was a clay ground, dusty ground. So that would obviously be an ideal solution for that, then, wouldn't it? Yeah. So one of the problems with um, rural driveways and gravel driveways in particular is that when it rains, the water gets flow gets concentrated creates energy and creates washaways. Um, yep. So whilst if you're on a sloped area, how do you stop the washaway? If you lay the grid on top of the gravel and fill it with gravel, at the end of the day, the water can't get any energy. And so it doesn't get the energy to create the washaways down the centre of the pathways, uh, centre of the driveways and the like. So and by speed, energy, you mean the speed of the water flowing, washing the dirt away? Yeah, so you don't get the speed. So the water ends up trickling through the gravel and because it can't get a flow over the top of the gravel, because the grid sits on top, you don't get this energy output, which then takes all the gravel away and creates the washaways. Um, so generally, the, the beauty about rural driveways, or the simple solution for rural driveways, is to slow the water down. So anything you can do to slow the water down. Uh, and the grid gives you a drive on the surface, which allows that water to be slowed down, and therefore you're not getting that washout uh, on that driveway occurring over time. Right. So, once you put it in, at the end of the day, once it's there, it's there forever. Um, and on particularly steep driveways, asphalt suppliers will actually not put asphalt above 12 degrees because it's too steep, but you can certainly put the grid on steeper driveways than that using a staking and anchoring plan, which allows you to, to maintain those driveways in great condition for years. Right, and because each of the individual cells are filled with the gravel, the gravel doesn't, the gravel doesn't run down the hill, no. You don't end up skidding on it. Yeah, you, you have the idea with the, with true grid is to fill the cell to the top because you don't want the gravel to spit out. So if we do large commercial car parks uh, and they all talk about the hoon effect, you know, in councils, yeah. how yeah. the kids going to go and do donuts? Well, they don't like doing donuts because there's no smoke. So at the end, when they do a donut on a true grid one, the gravel doesn't come out because it's only filled to the top of the grid. Yeah. If, you, if you're your residential home, you wanted a great gravel driveway look you overfill the grid by about 10 mil and what happens of course is the 10 mil just shifts so you don't ever get the rutting it never goes back to the dirt so you always look as though you've got this pristine gravel driveway you know that real crunch feel that everybody likes yeah, with a neat drive, flat surface with a dead flat surface so it stabilizes the subgrade and makes sure that you can just drive in and out and only the top piece is shifting so it always yeah. looks like you've got a, a beautiful gravel driveway. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, so the same cool. things for pathways and the like. Um, access ways, you want to walk out to your truck sheds or you want to go out to the clothesline and you're always getting on mud. Very simple to lay a pathway and it gives you a dry access way through that process. Um, that's awesome. 
Yeah. That's fantastic. Well, you've sold me on the product, Phil, but then I've been installing it for a little while and, um, and advanced environmental services are the, the, the specialists at installing the stuff. So if you do want to learn a bit more, um, please come down and see us at Botanical Bazaar uh, on the Gold Coast at Paradise Country. Um, Phil and I will be there on the stand on the uh, 3rd and 4th of August. Come and see us. Come and say good day. Phil, thank you so much for your time and you take care and we'll see you when you get back. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Bye-bye.